the Greater Refuge Temple every Sunday morning for Sunday morning worship. This world will not end by COVID-19. I wish I had a church in here. Don't let anyone cause you to lose faith in God. And from the waters, He lifted me. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. You would have been in a nuts house someplace trying to keep up with that. Thank God you got him. Free in the Holy Spirit. Enjoying the greatest freedom of all. The Lord has been good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the doors that God closed. Just as well as the doors that God has opened. 11 a.m. Streaming live from Facebook. Catch us on YouTube, greaterrefugetemple.org. Oh God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, that same God who is immutable, unchangeable, he cannot change. I heard the word of the prophet, and the fire of God fell. There's some of us in here that realize that if it had not been, Remember, those who pray can expect a miracle. Bishop Charles E. Wright, Senior Pastor. Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., Assistant Pastor. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, beloved of God. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for that privilege we have today. We have come together to exercise it in praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has been good to us. One more Lord's Day, one more Sunday morning. We're here in the house of the Lord and to give him thanks and to give him praise. God has been good in spite of all that might have happened and what the devil might have tried, dangers unseen. The Lord thwarted his purposes, hallelujah. And we're here to give God praise and say thank you. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Who can stand before us when we call on that great name? It's Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. We have the victory. We want to make connection with God even further this morning through prayer. It has been said that more things are wrought by prayer than the world has ever dreamed of. Hallelujah. So would you stand with me at this time as our choir will prepare to give us the prayer selection and District Elder Michael Dickerson will come to lead us in prayer and following him we will have the reading of our word the scripture by Elder Minister Peter Lenton in the name of the Lord Jesus Elder Dickerson thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your kindness and we thank you Lord for being good to us in spite of all that has been going down in our lives Lord we realize that you have been good besides Lord the situations and the problems that we have faced in this world we realize you have been good in spite Lord of the enemy trying to turn us back Lord you we realize you have been good Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Lord Jesus Christ, we magnify you. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you glory and we give you the honor because we realize, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. We can't even make it without your grace. We can't even make it without your mercy. We can't even make it without your kindness. We can't even make it, Lord, without you looking beyond all our faults and supplying all our needs. What a good God you are. What a good God you are. What a good God you are. And you didn't have to be good, but we have decided to bless you, Lord, and to give you glory. Lord, we come right now, Lord, this morning just to say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for a roof over our heads. Thank you for the activities of our limbs. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't, that nobody had to wash us this morning and nobody had to feed us, Lord. We was able to do these things on our own. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that you brought us to the house of God safely. Lord, we also pray, Lord, for, oh God, some of our saints, Lord, that ride the subways. We ask that your blood cover them. We come against that violent spirit in the subways this morning. And we plead the blood of Jesus against the devil. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We come against you right now. And everything that you're trying to do, we claim victory right now. Lord Jesus, we pray for victory. Victory in our homes. Victory on our jobs. Victory in our bodies. Victory in this house right now in Jesus' name. And I decree and I declare a miracle on somebody right here and right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you right now, Lord, that you touch our pastor from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Strengthen him, him and his family. 
Touch our assistant pastor, Lord, as he brings the word of God. Let no flesh or let anything tries to hinder him. Let him bring the word of God freely. Touch him and his family in Jesus' name. Touch every word, touch every song, and Lord God will give you victory and will bless your name and will claim you as God and king of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you believe that prayer, put your hands together and shout hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading will be taken from this morning, Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to verse 10 in the name of Jesus Christ. This Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to verse 6 in Jesus' name. And the word of the Lord reads, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, he which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. Bury one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is thought in the word communicated unto, unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what to every man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sow it unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the whole soul of faith. Here in the reading of God's holy word. It sanctifies in our heart that we may grow and live thereby. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. How many of you know that your life is in God's hands? If you know that, you can get up on your feet and worship with, with us, all right? Amen.
Sister Les Ashley Linton will lead in that selection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our everything. Hallelujah. We can thank God right now. Don't have to wait until the battle is over. We can shout now praise and victory unto our God. He is our everything. All that we need we'll find in Christ Jesus, our Savior. In the midst of the difficulties of our times, we have confidence in God. Everything God promised it shall come to pass. 
Hallelujah. No matter what the enemy tries, we are victorious through Christ Jesus our Lord. As we move forward in our services this morning, in praise and thanksgiving unto God, in February, we remember those who've contributed so much from the Afro-American community. For this moment in black history, we're going to call upon Master William Blake Wilkins III. Uh, that's the... Well, he's slimmed down quite a bit. Thank God for you, William. James Mercer Langston Hughes was an American poet, social activist, novelist, playwright, and columnist. He was born on February 1st, 1901 in Joplin, Missouri. His parents were Carrie M. Langston and James N. Hughes. They separated soon after Langston's birth, and he was raised mainly by his mother, grandmother, and a childless couple, the Reeds. During his childhood, he attended public schools in Kansas and Illinois. Upon graduating elementary school, Hughes was named class poet, although he had never written a poem. That title started his interest in writing poetry. The year after Langston graduated high school, he traveled to New Mexico to be with his father. Despite his father doubting his writings, he began to write a poem called, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. When he returned to America, he enrolled at Columbia University. Even though he dropped out, he still received recognition from New York City publishers. He liked to explore Harlem forming a permanent attachment to what he called the great dark city. He loved to travel around the world and see new places and cultures. When he returned to New York City, Hughes was at a party along with other promising black writers and editors, as well as powerful white publishing figures. Soon, many writers found their work appearing in mainstream magazines like Harper's. Hughes was an influential, influential role in, during the Harlem Renaissance. In 1915 and 1916, natural disasters in the South put black workers and sharecroppers out of work. Additionally, during and after World War I, immigration to the United States fell, and northern recruiters headed south to entice black workers to their companies. By 1920, 300,000 African Americans from the South had moved north, and Harlem was one of the most popular destinations for these families. During this time, he was inspired to write a poem called I Too, which expressed that racial prejudice is disgraceful and will dissolve in the favor of equality. I Too, sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me to eat in the kitchen then because they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. Right. Thank you, Blake. Bless you. We're going to ask at this time Sister Zenobia Julie would come at this time and lead us in our national Black Anthem, everyone please stand.
Thank all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we move forward in worship and praise under God, we thank God for all of the people of God. Thank God for your support of this church, your continued support. In the midst of difficult times, you have been wonderful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. As we move, we are going to, at this time, prepare to receive our main offering. Would you prepare to give? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are envelopes available that you might place there in your tithes and your offerings. You know, you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives unto you. I can say myself, God has been good. God has blessed and supplied our needs. And even beyond our needs, the Lord has blessed us. Hallelujah. You cannot help but praise him and magnify him. And you cannot help but keep on giving. Hallelujah. As the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Please prepare to give in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take the envelope if you don't have one and place therein your tithes and your offerings to give unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing him who is the health of our continents. And the greatest blessing that we have, he gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Turned our lives around. We're not the creatures we used to be, but thank God we are brand new. As the word of God says, if any man's in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Motivations are different. Objectives are different. Hallelujah. Walk is different because our Lord has turned us around. And really, it wasn't us in the beginning. It was his initiative. As the Bible will say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. We're going to ask you to prepare to give. Those are giving electronically to GiveLify, prepare to do so. And others with your tithe and your offering envelopes that you're receiving, place your offerings therein. And for those who are worshiping with us live stream, you may send your offerings to us here. Make all checks and money orders payable to Greater Refuge Temple, 2081. Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. That address again, Greater Refuge Temple, 2081, Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. And the Lord will bless you real good. So let us prepare to give in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we well, bless the offerings as we give unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, dear God, we give you thanks. We give you praise for your goodness unto us. Thank you for another week, for another Lord's Day, that we're here in your house, worshiping you, enjoying the blessings of thy presence and the fellowship with the people of God. Bless each and every one. And Lord, as we give with those who are giving with us, oh God, we ask your blessings upon each life, each person, each individual. And Lord, would you bless these gifts that we give unto you in the name of Jesus. Bless them. Sanctify them, Lord. And receive them, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let all of God's children say amen. 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 We thank God for all things. And as we give in our tithes and offerings with thanksgiving unto God.
I've seen the hearts that's been broken. So many people to be free. Thank you for giving each and every one of you. We thank you for your tithes and for your offerings. May the Lord bless and enrich your lives as we worship together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to at this time have our final selection from our praise team as they come before us to bless us again. Pray for them. Thank God for them and their faithfulness. And we wait for the word of the Lord following our praise team the next voice you will hear will be that of our assistant pastor Bishop William Wilkins Jr. who will bring us the word of God but first our praise team come on praise the Lord everybody Hallelujah. come on if that was for me that would have been good come on praise the Lord everybody can you do me a favor and just lift your hands right where you are and begin to worship him come on he deserves all the glory all the honor and all the praise. Anybody know he deserves it? Come on, somebody just lift up your voice and say, Lord, you deserve it. Lord, you deserve it. Hallelujah. The song says, My hallelujah belongs to you. a simple song say my Say all of the glory, all of the glory 
Yes, Lord. Come on, lift your hands up and give God praise in the house. Come on, open up your mouth. Give him the fruit of your lips. Let him know you love him. Let him know you praise him. Let him know you worship him. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Hey. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. This is where deliverance happens. This is where bodies are healed right here in this presence. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. If they don't want theirs, you get yours. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Amen. We used to sing a song that says, got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. Didn't have many words to it, but the idea behind it is, amen, is that when I get into his presence, I can get what I want. Amen. I declare and decree today that you can get what you want from the Lord in his presence. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise in his house. Come on, that was good for me, but give God some praise. Come on, on the balcony, give God some praise. On the balcony, give God some praise. In the middle aisle, give God some praise. To my left, give God some praise. To my right, give God some praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you today, Lord, to say thank you. We glorify you and we magnify your holy name, God, because you have been so good to us. Father, we thank you, God, for this day, a day we've never seen before. Father, we thank you today, God, for my brothers and sisters who've come from far and near and those, Lord God, who are viewing the our live stream. God, we thank you for each and every person. And Lord, now we ask you now to please forgive us for our sins. God, we ask that if we've said or did anything that was not pleasing your sight, God, we ask that you forgive us and count us worthy to escape and make us better. God, we ask right now, Lord God, that you would even touch us right now. Lord God, from the pulpit to the door, have thine own way in this house. Lord, we feel your presence and we thank you for your presence. God, we ask right now, Lord God, that your Holy Ghost will have free reign in this place. Lord God, we need a word from heaven. Lord God, hallelujah. Lord God, not just something to make us feel good, but something that will bring new life, something that will encourage the hearts of your people, something, Lord God, that will illuminate us to serve you, Lord God, in greater truth. And Lord God, we thank you today. Lord, if there be any sick among us, we ask right now that you heal by your power and by your grace. Lord God, we ask right now that you would bind anything that would hinder the preacher or the hearer 
In Jesus' name, now, Father, please let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. One more time, put your hands together and give God a praise. <laughs> Certainly we do honor the Spirit of God that is in this house with us today, and I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the presence of the Lord. Amen. You may have heard me say it before, uh, but I want to reiterate the fact that the devil does not get intimidated when you get dressed and come to church. Uh, the devil doesn't mind you putting on your good Sunday hat and your fine tie and those bad shoes. Amen. What the devil doesn't want you is to have church. Amen. He doesn't want you to mess around and get in the presence of the Lord and get delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. He doesn't want your soul to be set free. But I've come to serve every devil in hell and let him know, amen, that we've come to have church and that we will bless God, amen, for his goodness and grace towards us. And certainly we do honor the presence of our pastor, Bishop Wright, and to Mother Wright. We praise and thank God for them. Let's give God a praise, amen, for them. And, and certainly to my lovely wife, we praise and thank God for her being here with us today. And, to our district elders, uh, Chris and uh, Dickerson, and to all of the elders and ministers and uh, all of my brother clergymen, we're so glad that you're here on this morning and we celebrate you on today. To our missionary president, uh, missionary Janice Johnson, and to all of the women of God, and to our deacons, and to all of God's people, we simply say, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to talk to you today, uh, and I want to kind of take a different turn, uh, today's message. Um, I want to just kind of talk to you, if you don't mind, on this morning. Is that all right? I want to take a different route. Uh, I was reading something, and I think I shared it with Bishop Wright the other day. Uh, a dear friend of mine who I typically uh, exchange uh, text messages with and we keep in contact with, it's a group of uh, bishops and we text each other encouraging things or things we find in the scriptures or perhaps articles in which we find. Uh, and in our group chat on this week, someone gave us an article that was done uh, by the Christian Times that was in reference to the Bonner Group study. And what this study actually showed was uh, that the pandemic actually did a number on the church. Uh, and although God used the pandemic in many ways, the enemy also is going to show his ugly face. And so what the article actually says, uh, or the thesis of the article, the full idea of the article, is that uh, many people who uh, uh, have not come back to our congregations, who have not uh, found their ways back to corporate worship, uh, of course, if you have an underlying issue or your doctor has told you to do so, we certainly understand that and encourage you to do what your doctor has said. Uh, but there is a deeper issue. And uh, in many cases, there is a deeper issue. Now, not in all cases, but in many cases, there is a deeper issue. And this article, again, the thesis of the article was that many of the individuals uh, were on their way out of the door anyway. Uh, the article says that they were right at the cusp of, of staying and leaving. And what this, uh, the pandemic actually did uh, was give them the excuse that they needed to walk out the door and perhaps never return. Uh, the article goes on to give some ways to kind of uh, 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 win those individuals back uh, and, uh, but, but I was concerned when I read the article because a part of my concern was how could people be in church with us and would not realize that they're just this much away from walking out the door. That, 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 is, that is concerning. And uh, I began to pray about it and, and uh, I began to search the scriptures. And I think, um, well, the Lord moved upon my heart uh, and gave me this. And I wanted to read this to you, if you will, in Acts chapter number 20. And again, as I told you, I think I'm going to take a different route on this morning. Amen. I kind of feel like a little bit of Fred Price on this morning. I don't think I'm going to do too much. 
uh, hollering, amen, on this morning, but I just want to talk to you if that's okay. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter number 20, beginning at verse number 6, and it reads on this wise, and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of the unleavened bread and came unto them at Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Somebody say midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in the window a certain young man named Ithacus. Somebody say Ithacus. Uh, being fallen into a deep sleep and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Verse number 10. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When we therefore was come up again and he broke bread and eaten and taken a long while, even to the break of day. So he departed. Verse number 12, and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. I want to talk to you on this morning from the thought, Ictus has fallen, but help is on the way. Ictus has fallen, but help is on the way. Uh, like many of you, perhaps, um, most people don't like being alone. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is being alone uh, can be a bit uh, lonely. Um, now, some of you may say, well, Bishop, that may be your testimony, but I like being alone. Well, uh, I think all of us enjoy having moments of being alone, but then there are other times in which being alone can be lonely. I would like uh, to suggest to you uh, that uh, everyone wants to enjoy the high points of life with somebody. You, you, you know how it is when, when uh, you're doing something or perhaps you get a raise on the job or a promotion on the job. You want to be able to go home or go to someone and talk to them about your accomplishments. Perhaps even on the holidays, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, there's nothing like gathering around the table with all of your loved ones and enjoying the day. Man, just in that same regard, you also want someone to share the lows with. You know, the moments in which uh, you have to kiss your parent on the forehead for the last time. You want someone to hold your hand and walk you through it. Uh, when, hey amen, you get bad news from the doctor. Sometimes being alone can be challenging because, hey amen, the devil knows how to beat up with you on you when you're by yourself. Well, uh, we'll see that even through the scriptures, the Lord recognized the fact that being alone was not such a good thing. Man, in Genesis chapter number one, we see the creation of man, amen, verse number 27 through verse number 28, amen, where it tells us that God created man in his own image, and he created male and female, which it gives the overall, amen, picture of God's creation of man. Man and God told them to be fruitful and to multiply. Don't be by yourselves, reproduce. And I would like to suggest to you uh, that that's why uh, relationships, and this wasn't in my notes, so uh, uh, I'll shy just a tad bit away from my notes, but 
amen, uh, that's why it doesn't work uh, when two people come together of uh, the same sex, amen, because reproduction cannot happen. The, the ultimate goal is reproduction. Now, some will say, well, Bishop, well, you got some women who, or men who can't, amen, uh, 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 reproduce. Well, I believe if you give it to the Lord, he'll help you. Come on here, somebody, and I'm a living witness. The doctors told my wife and I that we'll never have, amen, any children. Amen, uh, because of the condition of my wife's body. Uh, but I told her, amen, and laid hands on her, and we began to pray. And God gave us our first child, Maya. Amen, and then God turned around and gave us Blake. Oh, God, and after 20 years after that, Amen. The Lord turned around and gave us Madison Grace. Amen. You can't tell me what God won't do. Yes, Lord. And so we see here the very first man, amen, and, and uh, what we see is the creation of mankind. We see, amen, that Adam uh, is created. Amen. And when we look at the life of Adam in chapter number two, we see the creation of man God formed Adam out of the dust and breathed life into the nostrils of Adam. Man, Adam became a living soul. Man, then round about verse number 15, uh, uh, we see that uh, Adam was in the garden. And while Adam was in the garden, in verse number 15 and verse number 18, we see that God declares in verse number 18 that it is not good for man to be alone. So he said, I will uh, make him a helpmate. I'm going to make a helpmate for the man. And so the Bible says that uh, the Lord put Adam to sleep. And when he put Adam to sleep, it was Adam who he took a rib out of Adam and formed a woman. And then a man from this woman we have the first family between Adam and Eve. We see, amen, uh, their sons, Cain and Abel. Uh, and we also see the third son, Seth. Uh, but uh, those are the ones that we know by name. But if you go, amen, in Genesis chapter number five, we see uh, uh, that uh, Adam was about 130 years old. And we see uh, that uh, uh, the Bible tells us in uh, Genesis chapter 5 that they had more sons and daughters. And not just one son, not just a man, uh, one daughter, but plural. There were sons and daughters. And this began mankind, the family unit. Man, we celebrate families. We celebrate families. Eh, there's nothing like getting together with family. You, you know how it is getting together over a good barbecue, getting together over Christmas, getting together over New Year's and, and having some good food and everybody bring a dish. Amen. And you got to deal with your old crazy cousin Larry. Amen. Amen. Everybody looks out for Larry when he comes. Uh, Bishop Wright in his message, I think about a week or two ago, was talking about, amen, that that family member, or perhaps even you being that family member, used to be that family member when uh, others would knock, or when uh, you knock on someone's door, everybody hides and pretends that they're not home. Amen. But we all have those kind of family members. We have uh, those kind of folks, but they're our family. Amen. He's crazy cousin Larry, but he's my cousin. Amen. And I'm going to look out for him. Here is the family unit. We see Noah and his family, Abraham and his family, Lot and his family, Jacob and his family, Saul and his family, David and his family, Solomon and his family. And the family unit continues to go on. But through the life of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ does something even greater. Jesus Christ creates, amen, a new family in which we, were all, we, we are all a part of. Man, through his redemption plan of mankind, through the work of Calvary's cross, we see, amen, Jesus doing a great work and creating a new family that you and I are a part of. Man, and 
That's why Jesus said, when your mother and father forsake you, don't worry about it, I'll take you up. I, I, I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for my church family. Hey Amen. We got some cu crazy cousin Larry's even in here. Uh, unless the truth be told. <laughs> Amen. But you're my crazy cousin Larry, and I love you. Amen. Uh, it, it, it is all a part of it. And there's nothing, amen, like being able uh, uh, to be able to call your sister and brother on the phone and to be able to have that kind of communication with us. Because for some folks, this is all they have. Yeah, I'm preaching hard now. That's why we've got to be careful how we erase the church. Because if you erase the church, for some folks, this is all they've got. When you start pulling things away, you're now pulling away at their life structure. Reminds me, amen, of the days of uh, uh, years ago when we would be in church all day. Uh, Y'all don't know nothing about that. Uh, amen, you went to Sunday school and then you went to morning service. Then you went, amen, to uh, Sunday afternoon Sunday school. Come on here, somebody. And then you went to, amen, the four o'clock service. Well, before you went to the four o'clock service, you went downstairs to the kitchen, amen, and got you a piece of food. You could smell the rolls Sister Taylor was cooking from downstairs. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Amen. And uh, it was an exciting time for us. We couldn't wait to get to church. We went to four o'clock service. Man, after four o'clock service, uh, we didn't go home. We went to the upper room or to the prayer room and prayed a little bit. But before you went to the prayer room, you put something in the seat. Because if you didn't put something in the seat, after your praying, you would come downstairs and there wouldn't be any place for you to sit. Anybody remember that? Man, all of this has joined us together in this great family where now, amen, we are knitted together. You can't spend 30 and 40 years with people and be disconnected from them. You, 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 you can't make that kind of life investments and you can't allow people to put you on a guilt trip because, amen, you've made some friends. Man, uh, there are some people, amen, in here that I've known for a long time. The other day, I was uh, 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 in the, uh, standing over here coming from preaching, and I saw one of the sisters, and I said, oh, sister, that's such a beautiful coat. Amen. God bless you. Take that mask off and let me see who that is. Amen. That was Sister Tai. Had a beautiful coat on. Now, I've known Tai for at least about, amen, uh, 30 or so years, but I can't recognize foreheads. Amen. With all of these masks on, it makes it difficult for us to recognize who people are. Amen. Uh, but, but, but nevertheless, we're all connected. We are all family. Amen. I, I know we can't do any touch your neighbor and all of that kind of stuff, but you can certainly look at your neighbor. Amen. Would you just look at someone around you and say, we are family? Yeah, we are we, we are family. We're, we're, we're family. Amen. Uh, I know we may not be blood relatives, but we are better yet, we are blood relatives because we were all dipped in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And made to be the sons and daughters of God. Matthew chapter number 12. Uh, reminds us, amen, uh, while Jesus uh, uh, was in the temple talking, amen, and, and someone comes to him and say, Jesus, behold, your mother and your brother, and they, they, they're outside, amen, and they're looking for you. Man, and Jesus' response was, who is my mother? Who is my brother in? Man, and he, he said, behold, my mother and brother and a man of those who do the will of my father. So you are my brother. You are my sister. There is a connectivity in which we have. Man, we are the sons and the daughters of Jesus Christ. 
And so because of that connectivity, there is an importance that if one of us hurts, all of us should hurt. One of us are going through, we should all be praying, amen, until God heals that person. Till God delivers that person. Jesus says it like this. He says, amen, uh, 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 that, that, that if you have 100 sheep and one of them go astray, he says, leave the 99. Can you remember? Leave the 99 and go after the one. That, that, that's a powerful, amen, illustration of the love that Jesus has and that we should have for each other. Amen. We see, amen, that Jesus formed this great union that we call the church. The church was first mentioned, amen, in Matthew chapter number 16. Uh, Matthew chapter number 16, uh, uh, where we see the Lord uh, saying, amen, to his disciples, who do men say that I am? Verse number 14 says, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say that thou art Elias, some say that Jeremiah is, uh, or one of the prophets, and he says to them, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter says to him, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this to thee, but my father which is in heaven. Man, he says, upon this rock, here we hear, amen, this first occurrence of this thing called the church, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I, I want you to know something. If you don't come, we still gonna have church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If, 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 if it's just a few of us, we're gonna still praise the Lord. Uh, we're because this is the Lord's church. Yes, Lord. I said this is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. It's important for us to understand that. It's important for us to understand uh, that, that the more you stay alone, the more that you isolate yourself, the more the enemy is going to work on you. And I want to caution each and every one of you, amen, uh, the more you spend time by yourself, the devil will, amen, sink into you day and night. You don't believe me? Ask people who live by themselves. Sometimes the quietness alone can be deafening. It can be, it can be challenging. Now, now I'm not saying uh, that, that everyone who lives alone doesn't like living alone because many people enjoy living alone. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying to you is that, amen, uh, 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 that you can be uh, uh, alone and be lonely. Just like you can be in a crowd of folks and still be lonely. Just like you can have somebody laying on the other side of you and still be lonely. Y'all don't hear anything. So it is, it is this in which we have to be careful with. Hey Amen. I, I promise you I'm almost there. Hey Amen. We've got to be careful with this because, because the enemy tries to beat up on us when we're alone. You're not careful, you'll start talking into your mind and talking into your spirit. And I don't care who you are, uh, uh, if you have not had to wrestle with the enemy talking into your mind late at night, he's waking you up from your sleep, trying to torment you, just keep on living because it will come. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how many tongues you speak in. It doesn't mean, it does not isolate you from the fact that the enemy will still try to have his way in your life. Y'all, y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. All right, well, let's go to scripture. Amen. In Matthew chapter number four, let's look at Jesus. When he was fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights, the Bible says he was, he was hungry. Verse number three tells us, and now uh, the tempter came and said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to become bread. 
realized that Jesus had pulled himself away for his own fasting, for his own enrichment, amen, to stay connected so, so that he could, amen, remain strong. But here comes the enemy. And the enemy always tries to beat up on you when you're by yourself. Man, and, and uh, we also see in Luke chapter number 22 when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember him asking his disciples to pray with him. He, he, he said, pray with me, man, because uh, the time of temptation is coming. But yet his disciples could not remain awake. Jesus understood this because he understands that, 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 that sometimes people want to be with you, but they just simply drop the ball. Have you ever asked yourself, Lord, have I ever dropped the ball on someone? Have I not uh, been as diligent with my brother and sister as I should have been? And Jesus said, his conclusion was, go ahead and sleep on. The spirit is willing. <laughs> but the flesh is weak. I, 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 I want to I challenge you today, beloved of God, that, that we are responsible for each other. Man, we, we are responsible for each other. Here we see the Holy Spirit in the church, moving in the church. When the church is formed, the Holy Spirit brushes through the church and everyone receives the gift of the Holy Spirit. And a great move of God happens throughout the church. Amen. So much so that the first church, which was in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, they did not want to leave because it was the only church. Because it was the only church, uh, many of them began to sell their belongings, begin to sell their things, and tried to move into Jerusalem because they didn't want to leave the church because the church was important to them. Amen. So now our scripture takes, amen, helps us. Man, our scripture text helps us because it is the Apostle Paul who is preaching. Apostle Paul who is in town. Man, the Apostle Paul, who the Lord has been using, and he is in an evangelist coming in to feed the people. Man, there at Troas, just coming back from Philippi. Man, from, amen, uh, 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 the time, amen, of a uh, uh, festival. What we see here is now that he is with them. Now they are together. And the Bible says, amen, that it is the apostle who begins to preach. He begins to preach. The Bible says that they, uh, the apostle Paul preached on what is known as uh, the first day of the week. That first day of the week is Sunday. That's why we worship on Sunday. Amen. The Holy Ghost fell, amen, on a Sunday. Jesus was raised on a Sunday. Man, so we worship God on a Sunday. Glory be to God. And, and now we see the apostle uh, uh, preaching and teaching and sharing. In the, Bible, the Bible tells us that in the crowd was a young man. Uh, 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 I don't know who knew his name. I don't know if he was invited. The only thing that the scriptures say is that this young man came to church. This young man came to church. But this young man, it is believed, many of the theologians say and many of our, our scholars say that perhaps a part of the challenge was that because this was not their Sabbath, this young man had already worked a good part of the day, getting up very early, perhaps not having anything to eat. So he's hungry, he's coming for church, and he's also coming for worship. The Bible says, that this man is coming, and clearly we can see that the young man is tired. So the young man comes with issues. We've got to be challenged today because everyone that comes in the house doesn't come uh, to the house the way that we expect them to come to the house. Sometimes people come to us with tremendous issues. Issues from their mama. Issues from their daddy. And they come to the church looking for love, looking for us, looking for the, for the fellowship of the saints. The Bible says that this young man came, he, 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 clearly, he clearly had issues, but, 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 but that's all right to come to church a little tired. 
Amen. The word of God says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. This, this, this young man clearly had some challenges that he was facing. Because he had these challenges in which he was facing, we see that the Bible says that uh, there were some circumstances. We need to be very clear that, that, that this young man was in this uh, uh, worship service and everybody was worshiping. Paul was teaching. Some even believed that perhaps they were asking questions to Paul and Paul was answering their questions and they were going back and forth. Now, some people say that the real root of this story or the real essence of this story just simply means don't fall asleep in church. Now, if that was the case, I could go and shake a couple of people right now because I see you falling asleep in church. And I see you. It is, it is, it is, uh, it, 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 but, but I believe that this story is deeper than that. It, it, and, and many theologians say that it is, it, it is almost improperly placed in the text because it's kind of out of the blue. When you, when you read the text, it doesn't necessarily flow with the rest of the text, amen, some theologians say. But I do see the importance of, of this text. Amen. The Bible says that the room was wonderfully lit. Amen. And, and, and suddenly the lights begin to flick. Now here it is for a young man who's tired, for a young man who has issues, for a young man who's already beaten down by the day, the flickering lights was just another issue. I want to I wanna challenge us today because there are some people who come into our presence that already have issues. And, 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 and if we're not careful, amen, we won't, we, we, we've got to be careful that we don't push them even further out of the door with our foolishness. Hmm. Flickering lights. Flicking, flickering lights uh, 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 are things uh, that just one more thing happens can push him out of the door. These flickering lights was no good for a tired young man. These, these, these flickering lights was a challenge for him because he was already weary. He was already tired. He was already at wit's end. And these flickering lights meant something. You, you, you know how it is, uh, the old saying, it's more than one straw that broke the camel's back. You'll be surprised that there are people around you that just simply can't take anymore. They, they come to church, they praise God, they worship God, they sing in the choir, they sing in the praise team, they're deacons, they're preachers, they, they, they're faithful, but they just simply can't take another thing. And flickering lights, for some, can just simply be flickering lights. But for others, it can be the very thing that pushes them out the door. I, I, I want to challenge you, beloved of God, be careful how you talk to people. Be, be, be careful, amen, uh, 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 how you handle people because some of us are walking around here and you may be our flickering lights. You, 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 you've got to be careful that you don't become the catalyst that the enemy uses to push somebody out the door. I, I, I know you want me to take another route. I know that some of you may not think that this is important, but, but God pressed upon my ish, uh, on, my, on my heart, amen, that there are those among us that look good, that sound good, that smells good, but are in a horrible state. Flickering lights may not bother you, but flickering lights for some other people can push them right out of the door. Uh, flickering lights for young people, amen, who, 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 who are challenged already by a world that, that, that is driven by TikTok and driven by so much foolishness, amen, and young people who are trying to maintain and trying to uh, uh, stay afloat when they believe that the only way that you can be uh, successful is to go viral on TikTok. So you got young people 
who are showing their bodies on TikTok, on Instagram, because they're trying to be famous. They're, they're, they're trying to uh, go viral because that's what they believe the nature calls for. Now, here you come. They just made it into the house, and here you come with all your stuff. Well, I think you shouldn't have that, or I think you should do it. Leave them alone. I'm just so happy they're in the house. I'm just so happy that they're here. I'm just, I, I know that doesn't suit well for some of you because some of you have been anointed, amen, uh, the person to straighten everybody's life out. I told you y'all weren't going to like me this morning. I'm almost done. I, I see the time. Flickering lights. They're not saying anything. <laughs> but there's flickering lights all around them. They're flickering lights. They, they're, they're singing, but the lights are flickering. They're, 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 they're on the usher board, but the lights are flickering. <laughs> they're preaching. <laughs> but the lights... Are flipper, flickering. The Bible says in verse number nine, I got to get out of here. Verse number nine, listen to this. I'm going to read it from, a new, uh, from the New Living Translation. It says, as Paul spoke on and on, the young man named Icarus sat on the windowsill, became very drowsy, Finally, he fell asleep and he dropped down three stories to his death below. Look at the progression of this. First thing, he became drowsy. How, how could he be drowsy in the church and nobody notice that he's drowsy? How? How could he be among all of these folks enjoying the worship and he becomes drowsy and everybody just keeps on worshiping? I, I know y'all don't like this on this morning, but, 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 but I'm concerned that while we're having worship and while we're feeling great that we don't realize that there are some among us who have become weary who just simply have become drowsy. They're, 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 they're here, and every now and then they'll wake up and clap their hands, but we're not looking well enough to see that there are those among us who have become drowsy. Those among us who perhaps, amen, just simply aren't doing as well as you may think that they're doing. The Bible says that the first thing that happened is he became drowsy. Then the next thing that the Bible says happened is that he fell asleep. Here again, no one noticed anything. They were in worship. They were in good worship, quality worship. Paul was preaching. Paul was teaching. They were asking questions perhaps. They were engaged in the worship, but this young man sat on the side, said nothing at all, and no one noticed anything. No one noticed that this young man wasn't even engaged in the worship service. Do you realize, hey amen, if we lose this generation, it's going to take 25 years for us to get another generation back? Y'all, yeah, I know, I know y'all didn't come to hear this on this morning. But I want you to take this as a, as a, as a, as a, 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 a little assistant pastor rebuke. Because, because I, I'm concerned, I'm concerned that there are those who are falling asleep around us. And, and, and we don't even notice that they're falling asleep. We don't even realize that they were ever drowsy. We don't even realize that there was ever a real issue. The Bible says that, they, that, that, that the young man became drowsy. 
he fell asleep, and then he falls out the window. He, you, don't, you don't backslide overnight. You, you, back, backsliding is a process. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a slow process, amen, that we are pulled out by our own lust. We are pulled away because of our own lust. We are pulled away. The Bible says that this young man got drowsy and fell asleep. And then, whew, he fell out of the window. Hmm, I guess I'm done now. But I, I, I wonder, did they notice immediately that the boy fell out of the window? <laughs> could, it, could, it, could it be that the boy had been down there for a while before they even realized that he was gone? Uh -uh. Are y'all listening to me, church? There are some people that you haven't seen. Amen. Have you called them? Perhaps they're still down there, and that's not the pastor's job. That's not the pastor's That's your job. You are your brother's keeper. You have a responsibility, amen, to your brother and your sister, amen. That's why it's important, amen, that our auxiliary members and all of the people around you are awake because we don't realize that there are those around us who are falling asleep. The Bible says he fell out the window. But verse number 10 gives us the heart of a Christian. Now, now I understand why the text was put exactly where it was. Because while all of the worship was going on, Paul wanted us to see that you can be having good worship and there still be issues. Hmm. You can be having great praise breaks and there still be issues. You can, you can have folks running back and forth and there still be issues. The Bible says that here goes Paul. The Bible says that Paul realized that this boy had fallen out of the window. The Bible says that not only did Paul realize that the boy fell out of the window, the Bible doesn't say that the boy was hurt. The Bible says that the boy was dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. I come to tell you that there's some dead folks all around us who've fallen away. And I challenge you on this morning to throw out the lifeline. It's not good enough for us to come in here and have church on Sunday mornings. It's not good enough, amen, for you to praise God for all that God is doing in your life while your brother and your sister, amen, is dying around you. Ah, but I encourage you on this morning, amen, to wake them up and let them know it's time to get back to church. Amen. I see perhaps you've fallen away. I see perhaps, amen, you've gone astray. And I refuse to allow you to go astray. You are my brother. You are my sister. And you belong in the house. All right. I'm going to bring this to a close. The Bible says Paul stopped what he was doing. Paul stopped. Paul stopped what he's doing. I like that. I like that. Uh, Mr. Dinkins said, maybe said, some folk are pushing folks out the window. Amen. Uh, you you got to be careful. Amen. You don't have some folks pushing folks out the window. Amen. But, but, but the Bible says that whatever the situation was, it was Paul. Amen. Who, 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 who realized that this young man had an issue. So Paul stops churching. Y'all ain't going to like me today. Paul took his robe off. <laughs> Paul took his missionary collar off. Oh, glory be to God. 
Paul took off his vestments. The Bible says that Paul went down to where the boy was. And I've come to tell you, it is not good enough for us to allow our young people, amen, to slip out of our hands, our young or old. We've got to stop what we're doing, amen, and get back to the business of souls. Uh, it is not enough for us just to be in here worshiping, praising God, amen, but I love you, amen, and, and I care for you, and because I love you and care for you, I refuse to allow you to die in the house. Ah, yes, Lord, there's too much anointing in here for you to die in the house. There's too much power in here for you to die in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. I praise and thank God for the move of God that God has in the church. And there are some folks that are dying right in front of our eyes. But I've come to tell you today that the Lord sent me here on this Sunday morning to tell you that you will not die. Amen man but live. Uh, hallelujah. I see, hallelujah, that you're getting dreary, that you're getting weary in your well-doing. Uh, but I, can I say it like I feel it on this morning? Uh, I've come to tell you on this morning it's time to live again. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says uh, that Paul stopped what he was doing uh, and he bent down over the young man uh, and Paul took him in his arms uh, and gave him a good Holy Ghost hug. Uh, and there are some folks, uh, all they need is a good hug uh, from you uh, to bring them back to life. Uh, put down your tambourine. Uh, put down the drumstick. Uh, put down the keyboard. Uh, and give somebody a hug. Uh, and let them know uh, that we're in this thing together. Uh, I come to tell somebody on the day, uh, hallelujah, it's time for you to live again. It's time for us to get a phone chain going and get back our people who straight away the devil was rejoicing when this pandemic took place because he realized that this was his opportunity. Hallelujah to kill those who were already on the fence. But I serve notice on the devil Satan the blood of Jesus is against you you can't have our children you can't have our young people you can't have our seniors it's time for them to be reclaimed back in the house come on in the house where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on I know we can't touch nobody and I know we can't hug anybody right on your road. It's time for us to get back to praising God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. It's time for us to get back to the things of God. It's not good enough for you to come to church and praise your way around here and watch folk die right in front of your eyes. The devil is a liar. the Lord said there's a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost that's breathing in the house there's a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost that's breathing up and down the aisle you will not die but live ah yeah I know you can't touch somebody but just look at three people and say live live Live, live, live. It's time for you to live. You will not die, but you will live. Live to declare the goodness of the Lord. God is not finished with you yet. I know you've been through hell, and I know you've been through howl, but I declare it's time for you to live. I declare it's time for you to get up from there live. I'm not going to let you go. I'll be like the angel that wrestled with Jacob. And I'll be like Jacob 
and tell her I won't let you go until you bless me. Hold on. Hold on for dear life. Throw out the lifeline. It's time for you to live. I breathe new life in you. I breathe a new Holy Ghost on you. I breathe a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost on you. It's time for you to live. It's time for you to live. Somebody say, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm finished. The Bible says, Paul bent over, put the boy in his arms, and held him. Look at the text. It doesn't say, Francis, that Paul prayed for him. Now, perhaps he did pray for him within, but the text doesn't tell us that he prayed for him. What the text says is that he held him. Y'all, y'all not. <laughs> Sometimes some people just simply need you to hold their hand through some rough moments. Icatus was dead, but thank God, help was on the way. I come to tell you today, I don't know who you are, but help is on the way. I'm done, but I want to know if I could just get a few people to make a positive confession that I am Icatus. I have been in a state where it feels like I was drifting and I need help. There's too much power. There's too much anointing in this house for you to die like this. I want you to forget about everybody and anybody. And I want you to make a positive confession that will make the devil run and be scared of your positive confession. I want you to leave from where you are and just simply come to this altar. And when you, as you come to this altar, God is going to send restoration and deliverance. But you've got to make an honest confession that I am Icatus. I, I, I'm, I'm him. I'm him. I'm him. I, I, I know some of you may not want to do it because some of you say, well, people are going to talk about me. But I want you to know something. There may be some that will talk about you, but there's more who are going to pray for you. Would you, would you do that? Would you leave from where you are and just come to the altar and say, it's me. I, 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 I'm, I'm drifting. I, I need some prayer. I'm about to fall asleep. I'm about to fall out of this thing. I need y'all. I need the saints. I need, I'm about to lose my mind. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. I need, I need some folks who can, who can pray for me. I'm impetus. I need, come on, come on, come on church. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to throw out the lifestyle. It's time for us to. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. That's right. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. But I just heard the Holy Ghost say it's five more people. There's five more people that need to come. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to let you go. But there are five more people that need to come. And I need you to come right now before I begin to pray. I need you to come. I need you to come. I need you to make the confession. 
that I'm about to fall out of the window. I promise you, if this was going to be my last Sunday, I, I, I didn't feel like I could handle it anymore. I need you to come. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're among family. You're in a safe place. You're in a place where there's help for you. That's right. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. We're not going to let you fall out of the window. If we've got to hold you up all night, we're not going to let you fall out of the window. If we've got to stand there with you until you gain strength, we're going to stand there with you. Come on, come on. That's right. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I want you to know you didn't come this Sunday by accident. As a matter of fact, you weren't even going to come today. But there was something pushing you out of the house. Hashanah Maha. Because God wanted you to hear this today. That regardless of what you're going through, I wanted you to hear this so that you will know that I've seen your pain. Felt your hurt. I heard you when you called me. I need right now for the saints that didn't come, I need you to begin to pray right now. I need you to stretch forth your hands and I need you to begin to pray for these saints that are up here and seem to be challenged by life. Come on, pray for them. We're going home. Come on, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you now for these, your children. I thank you now. I thank you now, God, for all that you're doing in the life of your people. God, I ask you right now, Lord God, to let the spirit of restoration be loosed in the house today. God, I ask right now, Lord God, that you would touch right now and deliver. God, I ask right now, God, that you would release your Holy Ghost. Lord God, and send the spirit of restoration in here. Like never before. Oh God, I ask right now, Lord God, that you would send your hand of deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I ask right now that you would deliver right now as only you can. God, I ask right now that you would, Lord God, bring restoration to the minds and hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus, do it for your glory. In the name of Jesus. And we're not going to wait until the battle is over. We're going to praise you now. We're going to praise you now. Come on, put your hands together and praise him like it's already done. Come on, praise him. 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 In the name of Jesus. Oh, shade on my heart. Oh, yes, Lord. It's done. It's done. It's done. We're going home now. But the Bible says, the Bible says that they went back upstairs and they ate. And the Bible says that Iticus got up and went praising the Lord. Now I need you to get up on your feet. I said I need you to get up on your feet. I need you to go back to your seat praising the Lord because it's already done. God is going to give you all the strength that you need to make it another day. Come on, praise him. Come on, magnify him. 
goodness and your mercy.